This video explains how to handle the error message error in read.table duplicate rows are not allowed in the R programming language. So without much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you an example and this example is based on a file that is located in a directory on the desktop of my computer. This file is called my data. And if you open this CSV file, you can see that our file contains three columns, x1, x2, and x3, and four different rows. So let's assume that we want to import this file into our studio using the read.csv function. Then we might try to use the code that you can see in line two. So within the read.csv function, I'm specifying the path to the directory on my desktop, as well as the file name mydata.csv. However, if I run line two of the code, you can see that the error message error in read.table duplicate row names are not allowed is returned. And the reason for that is that our file contains commas at the end of each row. So there are basically two ways how to solve this problem. The first way is by simply deleting all the commas at the end of those rows. So we could go to this file and create a new file, which I have called my data modified, which contains exactly the same values, but without the comma at the end of the row. So if I would now go back to our studio, we could import the modified data that we have just created using the read.csv function. So after running line four of the code, you can see that no error message is returned at the bottom in the RStudio console. And you can also see that at the top right of RStudio, a new data set called data is appearing. And we can print this data set to the RStudio console by running line five of the code. And then you can see that our data has been imported properly. However, if you are dealing with larger data sets, it might be complicated to remove all these commas manually. And for that reason, I want to show you another alternative, which does all of this based on our programming code. So the first step is that we import our data set based on the original data, mydata.csv. However, this time we are specifying the row.names argument to be equal to null. So after running lines seven and eight, our data is imported properly. It is stored as the data frame data at the top right. And now we can also print this data set to the RStudio console running line nine of the code. So as you can see, we have imported our data set. However, you can also see that the first column is called row names and the last column X3 contains only an A value. And this is because all the values have been shifted one to the left. So we could change that using the following code. So in line 11 of the code, I'm first setting the column names of our data set to be equal to the column names two to the end of the data frame. So in this case, x1, x2, x3. So if you run line 11 of the code, our data set is updated as you can see by printing it once again to the RStudio console. So now you can see that the column names have been changed because now the first column is called x1, the second column is called x2, and the third column is called x3. However, you can also see that at the right side of this data set, we have one column which contains only an A values. So usually we would like to remove this column and we can do that as you can see in line 14 of the code. So in this line of code, I'm simply removing the last column from our data set. So after running line 14 of the code, our data is updated once again, as you can see by printing the data set to the RStudio console. And now our data set is fully prepared and it contains the values as we would have expected when we have imported our data set. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. 
If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.